hello. Um, okay, hello there, and to all who come to this happy place, welcome. If you're new here, my name is Abby, and I upload Disney planning content here on my channel every Sunday and Thursday. Today, I'm filming a live Q&A. I have some questions from my Facebook group, which if you are not a member of, is linked in the description down below. So feel free to go join that. Um, but I have some of those questions to get us started. And then if you have any others, feel free. I have, I can see your questions popping up here. So just let me know. Um, the first question that I got asked was um, in regards to a change that happened with the dining plan this year. So every year the Disney dining plan is like a new dining plan sort of. It usually doesn't change too much from year to year. It's usually pretty consistent. However, in the past, quick service credits, so on the Disney dining plan and on the quick service dining plan, those credits were not differentiated between adult and child credits. So in theory, if you have a five-year-old, but they want something from the adult menu at a quick service restaurant, they can use their credit for um, an adult meal. However, now that 2020 has happened, now the credits are differentiated between. So kids can't order off the adult menu anymore. So in reference to, for some background information. Hi, Patricia. I'm excited you're here. Um, so which quick service locations have a kid's menu and what is on the kid's menu? Um, so kid's menus are pretty much available everywhere. I have never noticed a place that didn't have a kid's menu. I think there are one or two. Um, I don't know off the top of my head exactly what they are, but everywhere I've been, I think Casey's Corner doesn't have a kid's menu actually. Um, but anyway, most places have a kid's menu. So the kids just have to order off of that. The places that don't have a kid's menu are probably not gonna have meals. They're probably going to be more like snacks. Snacks, it doesn't matter. Anyone can get any snack. There's no differentiation there. Um, the next question that I got was, is Yak and Yeti restaurant included for a table service credit on the dining plan this year still? A lot of these are dining questions because I've been talking about dining on my channel a lot lately. Um, the website is currently showing contradictions. And this has to do with the way certain restaurants at Disney are run. So uh, if you're familiar with Disney Springs, most of the restaurants in Disney Springs, for example, are not run by Disney. I can think of only a few that are Disney restaurants. The rest of them are from outside companies. Um, Landry's owns like uh, Rainforest Cafe, T-Rex, and they have like other, they own all of them everywhere. And there's a couple others, like a steakhouse, but that's not on Disney. Anyway, so there are these outside companies that own restaurants on Disney property. And Yak and Yeti is owned by the same company as Rainforest Cafe. So every year, these uh, third party restaurants have to renegotiate contracts with Disney. And sometimes those contracts have not been finalized by the time like the end of 2019 was happening into the transition to 2020. Um, so it is like a little bit of a risk, I guess you could say, to book a third party restaurant for like early January. <laughs> but I've personally never seen a restaurant not be included in the dining plan that once was. They usually figure it out. So it's not like something to be too, too concerned about, but you should be aware. Um, most of the restaurants in the World Showcase are not Disney restaurants. The actually most of the restaurants in Epcot are not Disney restaurants, and then Disney Springs. Stay or each day you have park tickets. Like if we have seven days booked but only six park tickets, will we have extra dining plan credits? Um, so the dining plan is completely based on your resort stay. It is not based on your park tickets at all. So if you're going for ten days but you have four day park tickets. Not that that's a super common thing, but you would have nine credits because you're there for 10 days, so you're there for nine nights. I did an entire video on the dining plan last week, Thursday, Sunday, I don't know, sometime last week. Um, but if you click on my channel, it'll be like the second video. Um, and that goes like way in depth into the Disney dining plan and how 
all that works and how credits are calculated and how to use your credits and all that. So I would recommend checking out that video, but it's not based on your park tickets at all. You don't have to worry about that because there are restaurants far and wide outside of the parks. There's actually far more outside. You can use them in the resorts. You can use them in the parks, anything like that. Um, then what else did she say? She said something else. Um, also, what are your favorite table service restaurants? So I like character dining myself. I think it's fun. Um, hi, Kimberly. Um, so my favorite restaurants, like my, probably my favorite is Akershus in Epcot. It's Princess Dining in Norway. I really love the Norway Pavilion as a whole. I love that it's all frozen, <laughs> but um, Akershus, like I remember going there as a kid and Hi, Yvonne. Um, I remember going there as a kid and dining with the princesses when I was, I was probably like eight. And then I went back for, I went like when I, in 2016 was my first trip, like as an adult. And we went there again, because we had free dining. Um, and the food is just always really good. They did take my favorite, favorite, favorite thing off the menu. I was pretty bummed. I probably couldn't have it now anyway. I think I'd be allergic to it. But it was called, I don't know if I'm, I could be butchering the pronunciation, but it was called field pasta and it was delicious. It was basically ravioli, but it had this Norwegian sauce on it. It was really, really good. Um, but Akershus is one of my favorites. I like Cinderella's Royal Table a lot. I think the food is really good. I got filet mignon, I think, last time I was there. And we're thinking about going back in April. Um, I also really like Crystal Palace. See, I told you, I like a lot of character dining. Crystal Palace at breakfast has this amazing, it's Pooh's Puffed French Toast. And I looked up how to make it. I actually used like a recipe, but then kind of adapted it. So I actually ended up making my own recipe for it. And I made a printable. So maybe I'll stick that in the comments or the description. But it's, they make French toast and they like soak the bread and the egg and the milk mixture or whatever. And then they dip it in pancake batter. <laughs> And then they fry it. It's so bad for you. And then once it comes out of the fryer, I believe they put cinnamon and sugar on it. It's just so good. So good. You don't put syrup or anything on it. I mean, I guess you could, but I didn't because that's a lot. Um, delicious. I've also done Crystal Palace at dinner and it's really good too. Um, Chef Mickey's is a popular one. The food, you don't go there for the food though. You go there because it's Chef Mickey's and everyone goes to Chef Mickey's when they go to Disney. Um, the, some non-character dining, let's think about non-character dining. Um, we like Grand Floridian Cafe, which is at Grand Floridian, obviously. We also like the restaurant next door, 1900 Park Fair, but again, that's character dining. Um, Grand Floridian Cafe has the best French toast, except maybe Pooh's Puff French toast, but I don't really count that as French toast. That's more like a dessert, I think. But Grand Floridian Cafe has the best French toast ever, I think. Um, and then we really liked Coral Reef. And we eat, we've eaten at like so many places that I can't even remember like where and what we had. Tepan Edo in Japan is pretty good. And I like the hibachi dining experience. Um, and it was a nice way to get out of the heat we were there in june when we did that so it was nice to do that oh we do like rose and crown in the united kingdom we did a dining package there actually in november that was so worth it and you can also use your dining plan on dinner packages like uh show packages like that i believe that's two credits though so you have to keep that in mind <laughs> um yeah, I definitely have like a list of like restaurants I do like and restaurants that I don't really want to go back to. But yeah, those are some of my favorite table service restaurants. Um, okay, if you guys have questions, feel free to jump in with them. I see a bunch of you in the chat. Um, <clears throat> mobile ordering and pickup at fast service places. Haven't tried it. How far in advance do you need to order? Does it work okay for hot or cold foods? Um, I pretty much exclusively mobile order at the quick service restaurants now. 
I love mobile ordering. They recently added the capability to use your dining plan. So that's super convenient. Um, but my mobile order experience is slightly different because I have allergies. So um, we've never had a problem with it being hot or cold. But you shouldn't press, like, when you go to order, you put your order in and then you, like, confirm your payment information. And then it brings up a screen and there's a button that says, I'm here. And you don't click that button until you're there. Don't do that unless <laughs> we'll get there. But don't do that till you get there. I, on the other hand, do click it while I'm still walking, like, toward a restaurant. If I'm heading in the general direction of the restaurant, then I click it because with my allergy, they often make the food in different locations, not in the restaurant. So it takes forever for me to get food anywhere. Um, but if you don't have allergies, like they're just making it right there, don't click on here until you're there or your food will be cold. But we've never had a problem with it being cold um, because we don't click here. I do, but like I still wait 15 minutes after. Actually, one of my favorite places to mobile order is Columbia Harbor House in Magic Kingdom because they have these gluten-free chicken nuggets. I swear, they are the best chicken nuggets I'll ever eat. And they're the only, there's only two places on property that have nuggets. The rest of them have tenders. And the tenders have a completely different breading. It's completely different. It's a whole thing. But um, I can mobile order them as I'm like, I'll mobile order, click I'm here, ride Haunted Mansion with a fast pass come back and it'll be perfect timing. So that's how long it takes to get allergy food on mobile order. And certain allergies can't order on mobile order. Um, the big eight are listed on most restaurants, like big eight friendly foods. But if you have like a strange allergy, which I also have a few strange allergies, then you shouldn't order unless you're like, sure, like I'm allergic to mushroom. There's not mushroom in <laughs> chicken nuggets. So then you're good. Um, let's see what other questions we got here. Um, oh, okay. So one other thing that I did want to mention, I made a video like, I don't know, two and a half weeks ago uh updating on why I hadn't posted a video in a while and then I talked about my 2020 travel plans and I said I was only going to Disney twice this year I was wrong I don't know what happened but I'm gonna have to make a whole new video on that because now I'm going five times and it's ridiculous and I'm really not sure how that happened but it did it's fine we're fine um Another question that I got asked was how Memory Maker works. Um, I have a lot of clients booking new packages right now. This is something called wave season. And if you're not in the travel business, wave season just means that right after Christmas in the month of January, like kind of through tax time, everyone wants to book their vacations. So we are all very, very busy. Um, during wave season. And so I'm explaining a lot about Memory Maker right now. And Memory Maker is a photo package, basically, and it gives you unlimited digital downloads of your pictures from your vacation. Now, Memory Maker has to be purchased at least three days in advance for a price of $169. Or if you buy it and you want it to work the day of, it's $199. So you can bundle it right into your package. And then when you get to the parks, if your package is linked correctly to your app, then it'll show up without watermarks. Um, when you go to a photographer, any of the photographers in any of the parks, in any of the resorts and Disney Springs, there's photographers everywhere. Um, they'll take your picture and they'll scan your band. In every park, but magic or er, but Animal Kingdom, they scan it after. But in Animal Kingdom, for some reason, they scan your band and then they take your picture. Don't know why. Um, but I then had a client there this week, which I just want to mention. Her Jasmine pictures didn't show up in her account. Pictures can take twenty four to forty eight hours to show up in the first place. Usually, they are much quicker. Usually, they show up within like an hour or two. I have noticed Merida pictures always take a couple hours. Don't know why. Um, 
but if they don't show up after about 48 hours, you want to go to the camera centers in one of the parks. So in Magic Kingdom, it's to the right. When you go into the building to meet Mickey, it's to the right. Um, if you have a general idea of the time and where the picture was taken, they can usually track it down. So you just have to go visit the camera center. Um, any cool ideas for a six-year-old's birthday celebration? We're going in early December. Is it a boy or a girl? I'm going to answer for both because I might as well. We also have a dog in here. Um, so for a six-year-old, one thing that would be super fun would be to do um, Pirates League. What are you eating? Oh, she's got a bone. Okay. Um, there's something called Pirates League in Magic Kingdom. And okay, it's a girl. Um, Pirates League has makeovers for kids three and up, and you can actually do it as an adult as well. And they'll transform you into a pirate or a mermaid. So, I mean, girls can be pirates, boys can be mermaids, they don't care. But um, they have pirate and mermaid makeovers there, which are super fun, and they're pretty reasonable. Um, we were just looking at it for our April trip, which is a new trip. <laughs> um, so that's super fun. Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique is also super fun. That's a princess makeover. Um, there's also, if they're a Peter Pan fan or a pirate fan in general, there's a fireworks cruise, a pirate and pals fireworks cruise, I think it's called. It leaves out of the contemporary and you get to go. It's like a party on the boat with Captain Hook and Peter Pan. And I don't think they go on the boat. I think they just meet with you before. And then there's a bunch of snacks. I haven't done it yet. Um, but it's super popular. I've seen kids like in line waiting to meet those characters. It's like a small event, but if there's still other people there. Um, I've seen it multiple times. I just haven't actually been on it. But um, they also have mermaid classes now. They're not run through Disney. They're at a couple of resorts. Caribbean Beach is one of them. And then I think Yacht and Beach Club. Um, I could be wrong on Yacht and Beach, but definitely at Caribbean Beach. Um, so those are fun. But, <coughs> let's see. Any other questions from Facebook? Ooh. Um, there's been a lot of talk. Like I said, I, some of you weren't on here when we started but I do have a Facebook group. It's always linked in the description down below. Um, it centers on traveling with kids, but there are people, I have clients in there that are not kids, or don't have kids and are not traveling with kids, but feel free to join that. That's where I'm pulling these questions from. Um, if you are shipping packages to the hotel, what do you put as like your address because you don't know your room number? That's a good question. Um, we've done orders from Amazon and uh, like prime now, I think we did regular Amazon orders also. And then we've done Instacart. So when you're putting in the order, you look up your resort address on Google or Disney also sends you emails with your resort's address. You can also pull it from there. And then in the address line number two, like that little one where you would put like apartment, you want to put like guest uh, colon your name and then confirmation number and your confirmation number so that they know who <laughs> the order belongs to because if you just ship it to the resort, like it's not gonna get to you. Um, keep in mind there is a $6, last time I checked, it's $6 fee to have those groceries or that order accepted or packages. Um, and that includes them bringing it to your room, minus the tip. Um, when will Disney release park hours and the schedule for Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party in September? I have seen the dates for August. I don't know where I saw them. I saw August dates, though. Um, so they are it, It's probably coming from the Disney app. I haven't looked yet like I don't have people in August right now that want to do the Halloween party or have mentioned it um so soon soon we will get 
all of the dates soon. Usually it's like the end of January. But yeah, um, they probably won't go on sale right away. I think last year, I want to say they went up for sale in March, but we knew the dates at the end of January. I believe. Um, going for my birthday as well. I know they have birthday packages for sale. So those aren't like in park experiences. Yeah, those are decorations for your hotel room. Um, they are pricey. They start at like $45 and then they go way up to like $600. Um, but those are always an option. They're super cool. They're very cute. Um, you just gotta pay for them. There are also like outside vendors that do it. Um, I'll try to link some in the description down below. Um, but they will, they, if you use an outside company, they can't come into your room and decorate with it. But Disney, if you get certain packages, they'll actually decorate the room for you. And then you could also just do that yourself and bring streamers stuff and call it a day. Um, since my arrival time is early, can I use my dining plan as soon as we arrive? Yes. So your dining plan is active from like when you do online check-in, it asks what time you will be arriving at your resort. So like, for example, we always take the same flight. We take the 6 to 8.35 flight or something like that. And so I know that it's going to take about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to get to the hotel on the Magical Express. So I'll put my arrival time as 10. So from that time on, you're considered checked in and you can use your dining plan. And then your dining plan can also be used until midnight on checkout day. So like checkout day, you check out at 11 a.m., but you can still use it until 11.59 p.m., which is nice. Um, any news on renting scooters? Going to need one and would ideally like to pick it up at Pop Century. So... Renting scooters just got a little more complicated uh, in the last couple of months. Now you have to go through Scooterbug in order to like get it from Bell Services. Now, I have not used Scooterbug, um, but I've heard horrendous things about how Scooterbug is handling this. And I personally do not recommend them just because of the awful things I've heard. Um, so I had a broken foot two years ago when we went and I rented a scooter through Buena Vista scooters and I was happy with it. Um, they don't, they can't leave it at Bell Services. However, you can, they, you just have to like meet the guy. I don't, it might not be a guy. I don't know. You have to meet the person to retrieve the scooter from them and you have to meet them to get it back that is the big difference you just have to kind of like if you know you're going to be at the hotel at 10 a.m then you would pick a 10 a.m pickup time um yeah it just requires some coordination but not a huge deal um i booked my room with dbc for the first time can i still work with a travel agent are you an owner or are you renting DVC points? While you talk about that, I'm going to mention what Disney Vacation Club is. Disney Vacation Club is Disney's version of a timeshare. I am a DVC member. Um, it's definitely not for everyone. It's rather expensive. And if you are someone that stays like in the value resorts all the time, it's probably not worth it for you. Even if you're staying at the moderates, it might not be worth it for you. And you also have to be super flexible or you have to buy an awful lot of points. So definitely not for everyone. I've never had anyone like actually, like I've had clients ask me about it. Um, and most of them, like I give them my honest opinion. Like we try to get studios, which are the cheapest points. Some of them are still rather expensive, but um, we switch rooms. I went down in March for spring break and didn't book seven months to 11 months in advance. And we changed rooms every night. So you got, you, yeah, yeah. So I've never actually had anyone purchase them. They'd rather just keep using me. Um, but even as an owner, you can work with a travel agent. I do work with CBC members. Uh, you would just want to purchase the tickets through them. And then depending on the service level, there might be like a little bit of a charge. 
just for certain services like fast pass booking and dining and all that because how travel agents get paid is Disney basically gives us a portion of the vacation package and that is to reimburse us for the time that we spend making reservations. So when you use your DVC points, you're not giving Disney any money because you already gave them a very large chunk of money way before, but they use that towards like upkeep of the resort, not to pay travel agents. So long story short, yes, you can still work for the travel agent. And my information is in the description if you would like to send me an email. Um, but yeah, does anyone else have any questions? Let me check Facebook. <clears throat> Abby is my travel agent and she is awesome. She planned my trip and kept it in my budget. Thank you, Yvonne. Yes, I'm very excited for your trip. Um, when does Disney open January 2021 reservations on their website? 2021 reservations will likely become available in June. Last year it was June 18th. This year they gave us a one week heads up, which is not normal. They don't usually do that. Um, but this year they did, which was super nice. And I'm hoping they do it again for this coming year. But mid-June is a pretty good guess. I am already set up with my quote request form for 2021. I'll throw it in the chat really quick. Um, how I personally do it is I've had people filling it out for like a couple months now. And when the time comes, I'm just going to go down that list. This is what I did last year. I just go down the list in the order that people submit it. And I did quotes for about 13 hours straight. And it was, it was a day, <laughs> but, um, yeah, everyone got their quotes super fast. And then we booked whoever was happy with their quotes. I don't know. Um, so yeah, 2021, you're looking at June and that'll open most of 2021 you can only book 499 days out so it leaves like i think it gets you through to like september october but like november and december aren't quite open yet so you can book any package for 2021 up to 499 days out once those 2021 packages do open up um yeah so let's double check that there's is there an age limit of children who are free? Yes, it is from birth to two years and 364 days, you're free. If you turn three, then you are someone that is considered a full person. <laughs> um, but the caveat to that is if like, like, for example, my aunt and uncle are taking my cousin next week because she's about to turn three. So they're taking her now so they can get away with not paying for her one more time. But if you check in with a two-year-old, but they turn three while you're there, that's good because you don't age in Disney. So Disney's policy is it's the age at check-in, not the age at check-out. So one fun thing to do is like arrive the day before their birthday. And then on their third birthday, you can take them to Bippity Boppity Boutique because you can't do Bippity Boppity Boutique or Pirates League under three. So super fun. They're free and you get to go to Booty Boppity Boutique. So that's a fun thing. Um, shoot, there was another question about kids being free and I don't remember what it was. I don't know. Maybe it'll come back to me. Um, just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, okay. Yeah. I think that's all the questions I have, unless you guys have any more. Um, if you're new here, make sure you hit the red subscribe button down below and tap the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Right now I'm working on a series called Disney for Dummies. I am making a bunch of videos that kind of educate you every step of the way for planning your Disney trip. Um, free dining for fall or winter of 2020. There is no guarantee that there will be free dining for fall and winter. The promotion of free dining has been getting more and more selective every year, and it seems as though Disney is trying to phase it out. So eventually, I think it will completely disappear, whether that's this year or future years. I don't know. Um, 
I actually could see it not happening at all next year because next year is the 50th anniversary of Disney or Walt Disney World. Um, so I think next year might be the year we see it completely disappear, if not this year. Um, but fall discounts, free dining is not the only discount. Fall discounts could be out, if I had to guess, I would say probably in April, but I, they, Disney doesn't tell us. They just It just shows up one day. Um, we do get like, I'm in the industry. So I hear things and I kind of can know when they're coming, but I can't tell anyone when they're coming. Um, so like when we know they're coming or we're pretty sure they're coming, I wake up at three in the morning and start checking the website to see if they're up. And then I update all client reservations before, usually before 5 a.m. Because usually they're, or sometimes they don't go up till 5 a.m. Usually by 6 a.m. I've updated everyone's to the cheaper price. Um, the other thing to note with promotions is that the sooner you book, the better. Because I usually, if I have people book in the fall, like if I have people that booked last fall of 20, 2019, I don't even know what year it is anymore. Um, whoever booked in fall of 2019 for next fall or winter, like the 2020, I'm not going to be surprised if their price doesn't come down uh, because when you book that far out, usually the prices are kind of the lowest they're going to get because as time goes on, those stays get more and more expensive because the rooms are booking up and Disney can charge more for them because they have less of them. It's high in demand. But then the deals, it's like when a store raises a price so they can lower it. It's kind of the same thing, except Disney's doing it because of availability. So if you book early enough, which you booked quite early, um, we might not see a discount. You might have gotten your discount already by booking early. So, um, oh, one other thing that I did want to mention, I got asked about bounce back offers in the last couple days. A bounce back offer is an offer that you can only get when you are checked into a Disney resort. So the... Bounce back offers change. They are not always the same. So like the end of 2019, it was free dining. Right now, it's a room, a significant room discount for this coming fall. So if you go to Disney and you know you want to go back, the best thing to do, like I inform all of my clients before they travel that this is a thing. And then we can talk before about their dates that they might like to go back. And then while they're having fun in the parks, I call it in. It's not something you can book like online. You have to book it over the phone. So I take care of that and make sure that all of that gets taken care of. But it has to be booked by 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the day you check out. So because the phone lines close and it can't be booked online and they there is no grace period like you can't do it the next day. Once it's over, it's over. So, um, yeah, bounce back offers are great. Free dining, is, that's one way to get free dining. Um, I think that that probably is going to be the way you get free dining from now on, like once they phase it out completely. Um, one thing they are doing right now, though, is kids free dining. Um, it, they're, the offer is out for the summer, but they started doing that last I think the first time we saw it was for this period right now. Um, so what happens is when you have a dining plan, like you're a family of four and you're doing the Disney dining plan, the adults pay for their dining plan full price. The kids are free. So you get those kids food for free. So it's free dining, but it's not quite free dining. And the other thing is free dining is not always the best promotion. Um, we, it, you have to look at the numbers. Sometimes the room discount is better than the free dining discount. It completely depends on who is in your party, their ages, all of that. Now, my family is going in July and we have free dining because we are a group of six adults. So free dining for us is like thousands of dollars of savings. But if you have like two adults and like three under three, yes, I have a client with three under three, um, then 
they're all free on the dining plan. Like they don't have credits. So the room discount might be better for them. So it's a matter of like doing the math and looking, which is what I do on promotion day. I go through and <laughs> write down, okay, this is their price under this. This is their price under that promotion. That was their original price. And then I make the changes accordingly to like one that'll save the most money. But free dining is not the end all be all of good promotions. Uh, a lot of times the rooms are better depending, again, depending on the ages of the people. It's a great deal for large groups of adults. Uh, so if no one else has any questions, I'll probably hop off. That is it. Um, so the, Jesus, um, I'm trying to block someone. Hold on a sec. Okay. Ooh. Um, yeah, if no one has any questions, then I am going to hop off. Um, my next video will be going up on Sunday. So I think... Yeah, it's going to be a Disney for Dummies video. If you have any questions about, like, dumbing it down Disney questions, then leave them in the description or the comments down below, and I will work them into a video. I have a list of about 30 videos that go with this series, though. So it might not happen right away, but it'll happen eventually. Um, with that being said, make sure you have subscribed if you haven't already, and tap the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. And if you want me to go live more often, then also let me know because today I just didn't have time to I didn't have time to film a video. So I was like, I'll just go live. That'll be fine. Um, so I can do this more if you guys enjoy that kind of thing. Just again, feedback is good. So um, I hope you all have a great weekend and I will talk to you on Sunday.